Today's episode is sponsored to you by A&H Provisions. Meat and hot dogs that are so good, even Goyim understand how amazing they are. It's the next level of kosher food, and the website is kosherdogs.net. Get yours, enjoy them, a and Provisions. Live. Hi, everybody. Hi, Modi. Hi, Periel. Hi, Leo. Hi, Periel. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 <laughs> Before we get started, I have a built-in icebreaker. Go ahead. Ooh. I didn't even I didn't even prep you guys for. Oh, oh God. God. Do you want to see the shirt I'm wearing, Periel? Yes. Watch this. Oh, my goodness. I just want you to take Narrate your shirt this. Off. Narrate this so the people Leo's listening. taking off one of his 18 <laughs> Nike hoodies. And there Ooh, uh. we go. It, oh. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> this is a shirt he bought a thousand years ago. Let me see. It says Mukta. Is that hilarious? And what does that mean? Kareel has no idea what that means. None. Mukta. Mukta is um, wow. Mukta is like lesson something. of the day. I just got excited that Leo was taking his shirt off. That's for the next episode. I'll, um, take, I'll take Mukta is um. I, I wonder how do you define it. Um, it's like you something you can't touch, like on the Sabbath. Hot. That is sick. I love that. <laughs> yeah, you can't touch it. So, I, where did you find that T-shirt? I bought it on Etsy I from an there. Israeli where designer. Where did you find it in our closet? Oh, in the depths of the, the abyss. Depth. The, the depths. depths behind the Yoli T-shirts. Yeah, it's like behind, behind the, you're not far T-shirts. It's just, you. You never know what you're going to find in there. Really, it's like yeah. it's incredible. That is Isn't really cool? yeah. good. Very so, on that note. Wait. So where, it where means what? It Mukta is a. Uh, I, I don't know. The, I don't know what the actual definition of it is, but it's. Um, you describe it to me as something that you, that you can't is not kosher or like you can't use on. It's not kosher. It's it's your phone on Shabbat. You don't touch it because it's muktza. But that has like a negative connotation. Yeah, it's a negative connotation where you just can't touch it. You you just can't. Leo touch is it. sticking his tongue out and <laughs> like you're, like a a shofar, a shofar that you blow on Rosh Hashanah. Mm-hmm. You can't touch it on the Sabbath because it is. It's muktzah because you you can't blow a shofar on the on the on the Sabbath. Uh, the, um, that's what. So that I don't know the exact word that describes it, but it's. I think that I think you should get. I'm looking. I'm not going to look it up. I feel like that was a good explanation, and I think that that's a good idea for a tattoo. Frankly, uh, no, it's not. No, a good idea for a tattoo. I have my good boy tattoo, yeah, and that's, that's all that that's I all need. You need. No, no, no. It's, that's just fine. So what, what if else? I got tattoos? I've been really thinking about it for years. And you I get your Chipotle bag? <laughs> <laughs> you have those little, little things all over your body, little tattoos and little shkribalach. I call them. Oh, that's supposed to be <laughs> inside information. <laughs> it's shkribalach. You know, a... Shkribalach is amazing. <laughs> you know, the people have those little tattoos everywhere. Their, their state they were born in, a little flower, uh-huh. this. Sleeves. I would get full sleeves. Tribal. Tribal no, 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 no. Like rock and roll. With, oh, Oh, okay. It's a little too late for that, I think. Is I it? Think you passed that. Yeah, that, that train. Yeah, because that, that train, that train. Because now, you know, it's a, you know, it's a long process. Like, you have to go for, like, appointments and appointments and sessions and sessions and sessions. Well, it depends that. what you're getting, no? Mm. You want full sleeves? I feel like How, you guys are being really ageist right now. I'm not being ageist. It's just, like, it's a <laughs> lot of work. Do, but no. Like, I have, oh. I have a few tattoos, and they're all a certain size, and some of them are pretty big. But they're all one session tattoos. Like they're not. No, I would do one big. session tattoos. So like that's, little no scrape, sleeve, scrape no, sleeve, no, no but like. Oh, you want to build out a sleeve with like little yeah, like pieces, little, like like. It's still. too late. Is it too uh, late? I think that's muksa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely on the spectrum of muksa for sure. I can't wait till everybody starts to DM us what their definition of muksa is. First one thing I will tell you that the, our, our listeners definitely, what, as soon as we say anything about from the Torah, they right away send you all the Rashis and all the definitions. Tell us, please, tell yeah. us exactly How what. You define Mukta. Okay. Um, How was your day today, Modi? Where did just you, one where of those, did you go? Those of you who are not in New York today is one of those days where you wake up, it's, it's January, and it's 60 degrees out. You're in a t shirt walking around, the sun is, is out. 
And my day began at the Isra Israeli Council. Wow. Which is like basically being in Israel while you're in New York. Mm -hmm. You walk in and it's like the same tile as Israel. It's true. It's the same tile. <laughs> it's the same. Hi, do you have what you need? And, and nobody's waiting in line. Nobody's listening. No, people are in line. Mm. People are not playing around. It's very organized. It's very. So it's not like Israel. You have your. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it. No, but they all. And I don't know. I've been to this place a few times. Usually when you get there to the Israeli Council, which is on 42nd and 2nd. Don't tell people. No, you, no, Google, I'm just you can see where it is. You get up there. It, once you do get up there, you go through heavy security. Um, <clears throat> it's like being in Forest Hills. Oh, everyone everyone from is. Queens is in there. But today there was nobody there. I don't know. Why? I don't know. We just got very lucky. Everyone's there. out enjoying the sun. I guess so. Or they took care of their stuff before the, the, the holidays and all that. And um, I had to get this thing from my father called Ishul Chaim. Which is basically something that says that he exists. That you're alive. That you're alive, and this way you can send it to his bank. Like in a Israel. birth certificate? No, it is literally, it's in my bag. It is like a declaration of independence of a country. It's this thick, it has ribbons on it, a wax seal. Sounds cute. I was like, in, at first, I'm looking at the window of the woman that was doing it, and I thought, she, I just see her all of a sudden start pulling ribbons out. I'm like, this woman is, is gift packaging gifts <laughs> and then i look i go i was gonna say hey how long do you think it's gonna take and i just see her like there's a hole in the documents and she's ribboning it through and putting that. the wax this on is top craftsmanship of it. mode it was craftsmanship it literally looks like from her royal highness the queen oh no now it's the king yeah uh, wow yeah the, no the but. queen uh Lavracha. but uh <laughs> it's um that's where the day began and it was just great um my parents got there my parents are like your parents were Deep both in their there, 80s and they both subway. My mom is at L train, take you to the one train, the Z train, oh bring God. it to this train, and they they got there and they were not nine thirty on the dot. Right, because they probably left at six. They, oh, my parents were always early. Yeah. Always, my parents early. too. My mom leaves. Oh, my dad always. That's how we were raised. Uh, me too. It was. I really rebelled against it. It was people would get, I mean, my family showed up to our wedding like two hours early, just sitting outside in the car waiting. <laughs> <laughs> was it worth it? For who? For them or for me? <laughs> was the wedding good? The wedding was pretty good. Mm -hmm. The wedding was pretty good. I um, had an ice cream truck, truck parked outside. Parv? Not Parv. Oh, oh. she they don't care. <laughs> And actually, you know what? It might have been kosher because my mother-in-law is kosher. Or we might have just told her it was kosher. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. You can just put an OU on the side of the truck and call it a day. Really. But, but my girlfriends <laughs> arranged for this stripper to come and do a song. Okay, this, that's Muxo. That's Muxo. <laughs> she was hilarious. She did a rap song and she wound up in the ice cream truck with the guy serving ice cream who was like, you know, in his like 30s and like pretty good looking. Right. And like a wife beater. And in it's the called a ribbed tank now, Periel. Oh, the oh. Yeah, we don't call them wife beaters anymore. Why? Because the word is violent. Yeah. Right. But I thought that most people who wear wife beaters, like that's where the origin of the <laughs> word came from. <laughs> That's why it's called a white no, beater. I'm telling. I'm. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just. I'm just noting that it's not like, PC retailers anymore. and things like that don't list them as white. Like they used to like say wife beaters and stuff right. like that. They're, it is a it's a horrible ribbed tank. A ribbed tank. It is yeah. a horrible expression. It's like a horrible it's thing. A horrible thing. <laughs> it's, it's, a it's a very <laughs> gross word. So yeah. I'm kind of glad we've moved away from that. But anyway, continued. There was a stripper in your ice cream truck. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and she um the wedding at the wedding nice. and. Um, in the interest of... At your wedding, there was a stripper in an ice cream truck. Yes, but she wasn't stripping at the wedding. She? Yeah, she, yeah. What do you think? I'm going to have like a guy stripper? Well, you're all about equality, Periel. I don't know. Right, I'm surprised which... you didn't have both. <laughs> uh, I'm in shock. You had a she... At your we wedding? went to a girl strip club. That was my bachelorette party. We went to like a... So this was not at the wedding. This was at the bachelorette no, party. No, 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 no. I liked her. She was fun. She was like really um, a barrel of laughs, as and they say. So my girlfriends arranged for her to come to oh, my wedding. This was oh, a follow-up wow. appointment. Her name was Skittles. 
Of course, course it was. It was. <laughs> yeah, of, course. of course. The strip of course. wedding's name was Skittles. Yeah, and, and her she... friend Starburst couldn't make it? What was going on? The and she wound Did you taste the rainbow, Burial? I did not taste the rainbow. <laughs> The ice, cream, the, the ice cream man did. The ice cream man. Well, did. The, for sure. the male stripper came too. Milky there, Way. No. <laughs> no. There were there was no male stripper, but Skittles did wound wind up with um Eddie in his ice cream truck. Mm-hmm. Who's Eddie? The ice cream the guy. Ice cream, man. ice cream man. Of course. Well, how would I not know that that's that Eddie? So my friends like and everybody was lined up to get an ice cream cone and then they looked in and they're like wait a second why is skittles on her knees crouched in the corner of the inside of this ice cream truck okay we might have to remove that part yeah but let's why i feel like i was very um <laughs> delicate in how i i, I loved it yeah I'm, I'm glad you shared that with us yeah. that now your wedding had a had a dancer in it yeah a, a stripper how was your new year's I was in bed by 9.30, which was exactly where I wanted to be. Keep in mind, this is going to be coming out like in like end of June, January. End of June. (laughs) End of June. January, Uh, February, or beginning of February. Oh. What? Should should we talk about our our New Year's Eve? I don't feel like we should spend too much time on New Year's just considering the publishing schedule. By the time people are listening to this, they're going to be like, why are they talking about New Year's? Okay. Oh, all right. That's a good idea. A just a steer, just a gentle steer. A we fair. can talk about it. Just can we yeah. talk about your new glasses? I feel these like this is new, like a recommitment to indoor. These are my new indoor glasses. Um, we've discussed this previously. Yeah. Uh, they, we got. You some can see my eyes. Yes, but they're we've gotten like comments. They're like, Leo, please bring back the glasses. They're back, folks. I brought they're them back. back here in my Moxa shirt for you guys. And I only comments I guess just, just please bring Leo back. <laughs> It is true. We get a lot of comments like that. Mm-hmm. People love their Leo. Now at the shows, they everybody running to Leo and all that. And it's very. I heard too at, at the last show I went to. I, I think that's Leo. Yeah. People. That's why I wear the glasses. <laughs> it's very Carmen San Diego. It is. Um, what else did we have to talk about? <laughs> I, the, 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 the Anybody that sees the today's what's the date the fourth, mm-hmm. the video of us talking about the discount for our sponsor A and H um, provisions, we're not stoned in that video. No, it, it looks like we're wrecked, but we're not. Just because we're cracking up. Cracking up. I, I don't think I've ever laughed that hard. <laughs> it's my favorite. It was a genuine laugh. It was. It funny. was genuine laughter, and it was so good. It's my favorite clip I think so far. Mm, really? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so too. It is very organic. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about A and H? Oh, A and H. A and H top provisions. They are uh, they make them amazing- definitely, that's not how, definitely that's not. not the name. A and H is a pro- uh, provision. Top. What's a top provision? They're the, top, they're the best at it. What is a provision? I don't know. It's the meat people. I never know what <laughs> produce means. I don't know what produce means, and I don't know what provision means. <laughs> What the hell does that even mean? Produce, produce, th- produce and provision sounds like a sh- like a Dean and Deluca type place. Yeah, it's like I, I R.I.P. Dean and Deluca. I never knew why produce I that thirteen produce. dollar tuna salad because because the Earth produced it. That's probably why. Is that what? Yeah, I never. No, knew why. but the Earth produces everything. Produce is produce meat. Pause. Does he have to get through the ad read right now? He will. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he yes, he does. <laughs> A and H provisions. It's the best meat in the world. Um, go to well, the website is www.kosherdogs.net. Mm. And p- type in code word Modi, M O D I, and you get thirty percent off. Um, it's the best hot dogs. Even Goyim realized that this is Not the next level. Line. You don't what? like that? I'm a huge fan of that tagline. <laughs> Why we're br- they're branching out? It's like it's so good that even the Goyim love it. Love yeah. it. You don't have to. So they're glot kosher, right? right. Which right. means that they've been blessed by. Um, yeah. And so people who don't have to eat kosher are like, oh, I'm going to eat this anyway because it's so good. Because it's just a better quality right. product. Yeah. I, have a, I have a secret. <clears throat> Go ahead. N- nobody actually has to eat kosher. Uh, they, they, they choose to. Yes. They choose the to chosen. It's a- choosing <laughs> people. Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> oh, my God. We were not stoned. We're not stoned, and um, and that was just uh, me not able to read. 
It was so funny. I was stoned the other day and I, I haven't been stoned oh, in years. I, my nephew came over, um, who I adore. He's in his twenties and he smokes pot regularly. And I took like two hits and I could not stop laughing why are you shaking your head? No, because I, I, I'm glad that you had a good time. Yeah. But like the pot these days is out of control. Like they're like these strains that these kids are smoking and that people are selling. It's, it's like, it's next level. Like you, I don't, I would be in the hospital. Like, Do you never I, smoke pot? I used to. I don't anymore because it makes me so anxious and I feel like it's gotten steadily stronger and mm. more potent. Like do you not agree like that the stuff readily available in the market has got you're nodding your head over there our our engineer is like yes you said yes or, okay no, no. he's no. like keep me thought... out of there <laughs> keep, keep me out of your kosher conversation um i i don't like again you don't have to do a lot you always just do a drop i did i took two hits i was yeah, hysterical like laughing you, you know, in a ball I could not speak. I almost called you because I was like so excited that I was still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's fun to have something to do, like go to the gym or watch. Uh, a would movie. you have loved to have been at the gym when you were in that? I state? don't think you understand how high I was. Like, I can't even have a conversation with somebody. Really? I, yeah. Okay. Then maybe you need to. But you, you're the one who told me that they're like the sativa and the indica and whatever. That's all. Than... That's all BS. I don't, I don't hold think... by any of that. I, I don't, don't know. My yeah. Tomer said it. My nephew said it was true that he has a guy who comes over with a suitcase and. A... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a guy who sent it to us, Burning Bush, and he knows what I like and what I use. And for those of you who aren't pot smokers, <laughs> sativa is allegedly the like more uppy one, like uppy happy one, and then indica is like the more more downy one and the way you can remember is if you smoke indica you're going to be in the couch oh, oh. My, <laughs> That's what you oh my god so just keep that in mind did you just make that up no it's a common phrase it's a in common phrase like mukta yeah <laughs> With like mukta. Which, in the couch. If you smoke Wait, can you, in the couch. Look up mukta. How, yeah. How really yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't stop looking at that now. Um, <clears throat> can't we call like Rabbi Bellino and no. get him to? I call him because we, this year, 2023, is going to be a merch year. <gasps> we so are doing it. I want a hat that says Mashiach Energy. I want. You need, to, you need a hat that says Shkoyach, I think. We have that. Shkoyach. He has that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna put that up. We're gonna figure out all of the that stuff and it's just gonna be amazing. The Yamaka sold out so well at the shows. I'm, it got me it got me excited. It got me excited. I love it. I told you I want um dark meat and white meat hats. I think those would fly. You think so? I really do. Oh my god, maybe we should do that. So cute. You, you do think? a white one that says white meat and a black one that says dark meat. I think this is cancelable. <laughs> Oh, stop it. Is, uh, Mukta. Oh, the, the engineer now has chimed in. That is <laughs> definitely not okay. What? Switch it. The black hat means the white meat. The white hat is the black Oh. Oh. It's good. Yang yang action. It's yeah. really good. They wouldn't know what to do. They, they wouldn't know what to do. It's great. <clears throat> and no, it's people like. People got an very offended at that joke. Who? One person. Sephardic one people got offended that you called them dark meat one one person it, it, i feel like it's like an iconic joke and 99 yeah. percent of the people right, go right. crazy what for it, it no mukta, mukta. Yeah. um quote unquote separated is a concept in jewish rabbinical law mukta object or subject to use restrictions on the sabbath the generally accepted view regarding these items is that they may be touched though not moved during Shabbat. Mm. Some extend this prohibition to the actual handling of these items. Halakha, halakha, halakha. Halakha. No, what does law. that mean? Law. Defines various categories of objects or substances which are set aside, quote unquote, on the Jewish Sabbath. Whatever, you get it. Yes, we got it. So that the shirt says, right. don't touch me. Well, me or alone. touch me, but don't move me. Or uh, untouchable. Untouchable. Are you alone. untouchable? I'm not untouchable, but it depends on who's asking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like to be touched. That's not true. By by strangers, for sure. Well, 
uh, you a definitely big, a give off in a, in a in a wait. Are we talking about like a massage? Just like, in, general. in general, general. Like you a give a crowded off, place in a crowded place. Just anywhere. He Leo okay. gives off a do not yes. come near me if you have not been invited vibe. All right, good. To unapproachable. Know. I yes, called. unapproachable. Jesus. Okay. All right. It's not a bad thing. No, it's that's that's your vibe. It's kind of sexy. On the dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you are. I am. I believe it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are. He is. He is. If it's like, I don't like when people just come up and like start. That actually did happen. I know we steered us away from New Year, from talking about New Year, but now we're <laughs> talking about. Shock you were. You didn't want to about do strangers, it. and we did. Okay, fine. So we'll circle back. Okay. Yeah. Regarding New Year's, mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, which we did go seven uh, years ago, according to when this podcast is going to be. Uh, yeah. Released. Okay. <laughs> we went out dancing at a, like a big warehouse party in Brooklyn, and I, there were some people who just unwarranted like. If you're on a dance floor and you like kind of make eyes with someone and you kind of can get a vibe if like they're into it or not, some people just come up to you like cold, like touching you and like putting their hands on you and like coming up behind you and like I don't like that. Well, they're also trying to get through and all that, but no, otherwise, like otherwise it was a fun night. It was a great music and I had sunglasses. What time did you guys get home? Four. Oh, no, we left at four. Oh my god. Yeah, we left at four. Which is a good time to leave. It's a good time. Year's That's Eve. a good time to leave a party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, eleven thirty yeah. is a good time. It was fun to, to start the year dancing and sweating and getting a groove together. It was fun, and we. Yeah, were, if I left Moody there, he would stay until seven. Yeah, I don't know when. Wow. To I don't know when to. Leave. Really? I could keep dancing forever. I know when to leave because people's faces start to get scary. Yeah, so that's when you. Like leave. the longer they stay yeah. up, the scarier yeah. their faces get. But the the music was a good. Was great. We had a great time. Um, and it's just a fun way to bring in the Goisha New Year. You the know? Goisha New Year, hilarious energy. And Can dancing. we just call it like the calendar New Year? Financial, the fiscal New Year. There you go. Oh. The fiscal New Year. We'll take it. That's what we call it. That's what Jews usually call it. The fiscal New Year. The fiscal New Year is yeah. amazing. Is that the name of this episode? Yes. The Even fiscal. though it's coming out in January or <laughs> February. <Yes. laughs> oh my All right. god. Um, I can't tell you how much I dislike going out on New Year's. Well, because we've discussed 100%. this, it's an amateur holiday. Yes. Just like I categorize it in the same. Uh, folder as Halloween as a <gasps> holiday. No, it's, it's everyone who didn't have fun for the last six months trying to cram a year's worth of fun into one no. night, and they put a lot of pressure on themselves and their friends, and we're gonna have a good time, and these were we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do that, and and no one's happy. And I'm surprised you don't like Halloween. I don't not like Halloween. It's just an amateur holiday. You have to know how to navigate it and maneuver it. Like yeah. I've taken us to some good parties on Halloween. Absolutely, but they're just. Music oriented, no, you know. It, again, again, it's, it's either go out all the way mm -hmm. to a rave in a warehouse in Brooklyn Ugh. or stay home. There's no in the middle. We're going to go for dinner and then my friends. I would like that. Or I, I wouldn't. Then you're running around the city. And yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The that's, city's a hot mess. That's the thing. Oh, Everybody's you're talking about specifically like on, on holidays. Uh, like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Specifically on a holiday. It so was, on New Year's, we did something uncharacteristic because usually when we pick a party, we go there and we camp out and we just like commit. That's you know? the move. We don't party hop. Because it's, that's, that's where your night can yes, fall apart. Yes. Right. Um, but we, however, we did party hop on New Year's and I was impressed by ourselves and we pulled it off and it was actually really good timing. And I actually think we landed at each party like right when it was like at its peak. That's very rare. It was very rare. I think it was like a very special uh, choreographed Un unknowingly choreographed. How many parties? It's a sign. It's a zgula. It's a sign for the new year that things are going to line up. Right, you said that. I like that. That everything last year prepared. Yeah, the setup it's like yes. Yeah, here's your new year. Look, you were starting here. You made the move. You went there. You you had a change. It was good. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Well, we changed, I really uh, we changed our regular plan of only staying in one place. It was it was it was good. What did you take taxis around this? Uber. Uber. We were in like the depths of Brooklyn. The depths. The like, depths. No places you can't imagine. Like where? I, I mean, like behind a warehouse, like in between where they keep the salt for the streets, <gasps> and Bushwick, and like. But it's like a venue. Dumpster. It's a real venue. Right, right, right. Like, sure. And uh, and like they have behind, they have these cranes. Like there's like a crane where they keep the cranes. So yeah. Massive cranes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, but they lit them up so it looked really good. Oh, I love that. It was really, really great. You know what? I have to say that I'm glad that that's still happening, even if I'm not going to those places, because well, I. Come. No, I can't come. 
I can't go anywhere until four in the morning. I'll die. Those days are behind me. Oh, but you can get a full sleep tattoo. Yes, it's a, it's different. It. Do, Why is that different? Do. Because when those I used to um, do a lot of party um, helpers. Yeah. When I used to go out, I mean, I spent from like age fifteen until like thirty just mm. living in those nightclubs and. So you're saying I'm hitting my expiration date. I didn't start any of this until I was deep in my 40s. Right. That's what I'm saying, though. I was going to, like, Limelight and Palladium in the tunnel and hanging out with, like, the drag queens at Pat Field since I was, like, 15 years old. Right. So, uh, watching, like, Jerry Springer do coke off the bar at Limelight. I not, wish I could have gone to Limelight. So. Um, I also were, wish if I had a time machine... One of the places 54. I would pick was Studio 54. Right. I think that when I started doing the door, they get all upset at the door. They're being like, I can't believe they won't let me in. They would 100%. Yeah, let that me would in. never happen. Okay. <laughs> also, the uh, assumption of the time machine is that it like places me inside the building, oh, not okay. at the door. Okay. okay. Stop waiting in, line. in this hypothetical scenario, <laughs> I would be programming the time machine like the dance floor of I'm Donna Studio Summer's 54. horse. On the horse. On the oh, horse. Behind on the Donna horse. Summer. Oh. Yeah. Okay, when I was doing the guest list, at Limelight, I don't think you were born yet. You were doing the guest mm -hmm. list. You were the bitch with the clipboard. Mm -hmm. I was. No. Oh, mm -hmm. honey. How did that? How did you become the the guest list person at Limelight? I don't know. I mean, I that was like my life for so long. Like I lived in those clubs. I cocktail waitressed. I did the guest list. I started taking the subway from Queens into Manhattan to all of those clubs when I was really fifteen. At the age of nine. Yeah. <laughs> At the age of nine, you were subwaying. I wasn't allowed to leave the house at 15. And your parents weren't like afraid of something happening to you. Don't be mean to other people. They were more afraid My of parents, you being. They had no idea. Really? They, they had no idea. Where'd they think you were? Sleeping at Philippe's house. Oh my oh, wow. gosh, an alibi. Philippe. Mm -hmm. He was my partner in crime. We, 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 we met somebody once who told us when they turned 18, they told their parents they were going to. Uh, to a Shabbat dinner, and then they went. It was their 18th birthday to a, a club, and Go Go danced. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot who that was. I know who that was. Yeah, you'll tell me after. Um, but uh, it was like I'm just thinking, <laughs> like this kid couldn't wait to turn 18 and just run to a just to take his clothes off on on a bar. Yeah, it was so fun. It was so much fun. We had so much fun. It was crazy. I mean, it was the 90s. Like, they, New York was insane. People were, like, smoking cigarettes on the subway. You remember? Yes, I do. This on so the subway? Disgusting. It was so gross. <laughs> it was so gross. We didn't realize how gross it was. Yeah. Never mind on the subway, on planes. On planes? Do you remember okay. smoking on yes. planes? Yeah, not, I, was, I never smoked, but there was no, a No, but you remember? Section. You were there for that? <laughs> it was just so gross. So there'd be a section of the plane. I cannot believe. So row 30 and back <laughs> would be smoking. So somebody that was in row 29 was in a non-smoking seat, but behind them is a guy. Wait, but. Chain smoking, just, yes, chain smoking. yes. If you're a smoker, you can smoke on a plane. You just spend the entire yeah. six, five, 18 hours Ew. just smoking. <laughs> yeah. That is so gross. And then there's the people who sat in the non-smoking area, but they were smokers and they went back yes. to smoke. So they were just standing <laughs> in between the yes. aisles. And of course, they all had the, the unity of being smokers. Yes. Oh, you want a cigarette? You don't want a cigarette? There were ashtrays built into in the, the armrests. What kind of 19... <laughs> 60s fever. No. What 60s? This was I know, like but the I didn't 90s. know that in the 90s you could smoke. I thought they sure. cut Even that out the 90s. way yeah. before. No. It was I, straight up on the flight to Israel. Yeah, when did that end? With black lung. When did that end? <laughs> you landed in Israel. You literally. Oh. <laughs> you had cancer Chalk immediately. Like you had cancer. I'm so grossed out. When did smoking on airplanes cease to be a thing? I'll when, tell you right you're... now. But I, I flew can't. to Thailand when I was. 22 and we were like that's like a i don't know nine thousand hour long flight and we smoked the entire way yeah when this is it? bizarre to me i didn't think you two were of age to have smoked on an airplane we didn't smoke we were on planes i smoked we're old enough i we're smoked on, to be on a plane where people i thought when i picture that i picture like the 70s like people in you Bell say Bottom. that like it was you like four that? million years ago. I was oh, born yeah. in <laughs> it was I... the seventies. Yes, I was around <laughs> those and um and the nineties. Uh, 
the na- on February 25th, the no smoking sign was permanently oh, 1990. Sorry, oh, 1990. 90. But that was domestic, so international. Oh my God, you could still smoke. 1997. No way. There you go. Wait, so that means I was on planes with people smoking too, and I just didn't know it because I was flying very young internationally. And to Israel, it's actually you can still do it. No, you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. So, you, do you think like leading up to that deadline, people were just like, "This is the last smoke yes. flight," and everyone was just like going bald as, sm- as a former smoker, a thousand percent. Those flights to Israel were the most insane <laughs> things if you think about them, because we were in the back. Yeah. We had like the worst seats uh-huh. um, and the smoking <laughs> and then the prayers when they got together and they did oh, the yeah, whole the the full intense. minyan and they didn't do like a quick minyan. It was, like, it was a long drawn out minyan and they would do it like either where the emergency room was on top yes. of whoever sitting there. Yes. And then but the craziest thing I remember in this I remember so vividly. So they brought the trays down. You, you just imagine each row. It's like a section of six seats, 19 seats, and another six seats. That's how many mm-hmm. rows, and all like a million rows. Right. And three levels. Mm-hmm. It's yes. massive, massive people. So they're handing out the food, and then, you know, uh, chicken or meat, or chicken or blah, blah. And then when people finished eating their meal, they would bring it up into the into the kitchen themselves, just leave it on the counter. Right, right, right. They wouldn't right. wait for her to come pick right. it up. Yeah, because it, was, it would take them hours. Yeah. yeah. Hours. Because there were like yeah. a million and people on the there flight. There people on the plane, they're giving out coffee on top. They, they, they tried to keep you with the plate there so you wouldn't get up. Like, right. oh, maybe That's so the, funny. The two minutes I'll sit in their dumb chairs. It was, it was so horrible. Let me ask you this. I'm sure you guys have seen this picture of that ultra-Orthodox Jewish guy wrapped in saran wrap or with like a giant plastic, clear plastic bag on him? No. No. Okay. What are you talking about? There is, it's like it went viral of this Orthodox Jewish guy on a flight to Israel, ostensibly covered in plastic because he didn't want, he didn't want to, for a woman to sit next to him. Oh, wow. But you'll have to see it. But, um, Uh, what woman wants to sit next to him? Unwrap. Well, I mean, who has a choice? Like, if you're sitting on a plane, like, you get seated next to who you get seated next to. I once had the pleasure of sitting next to a super gorgeous, I think I might have told you guys this story, like, 20 something year old woman who had like two or three little kids next to her on my way to Israel. And she was chatting with me and she was so cute. And she was really, really good looking. Her name was not Skittles. (laughs) I don't know that Skittles, I would have described her as super hot, by the way. (laughs) Talented. Back to this woman sitting next to me. Back to the woman sitting next to me. Long hair, great body. And we like became like friends as you are wont to do with somebody on like a 97 long hour flight. And all of a sudden, she took her wig oh. off and handed it to me and said, can you hold this for a second? Oh. <laughs> Why? What was she going to go? She was putting on her... Tichel. Sh- her tichel. Her tichel. Her tichel. <laughs> tichel. Yes. Now you know what a tichel is. I now was going to say shmata. <laughs> no. Tichel. Now you remember the last episode? Yeah. Now, now you know what tichel is. Okay. That's it. Wow. Yeah. And what'd you do with the wig? Did you pet it? I put it on. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wow. I held it for her. Only on a flight to Israel. Is that like a normal thing though, right? That somebody's just going to be like, can you hold my wig? On, on any flight that's to Israel, it's going to be that. It's going to be happening. It's. Just... I wonder what happened to her. I really liked her. I felt like we could have been friends. It's probably a grandmother of like 18 people right now. She was like 25 years old. Yeah, she's probably a grandmother of <laughs> her kids. Uh, yeah, for exactly. sure. For sure she's a grandmother now. For sure. Her kids are in college. Yeah, yeah in yeshiva. And they're married. And it's, oh, it's good for her. No, I've had crazy flights. I can't believe the flights I've had to Israel. I just think about them now. I'm getting like flashbacks. When did you start? You moved to America when you were seven. Yeah, we and then when did you we used to go back a lot during the summer? Yeah, and, when and like immediately? Now I remember those. Well, we used to uh, we used to drop crazy drugs to sleep. What? You, what as, as a child? child? Yeah, as a what child. What were your parents giving you? We, my aunt, we used to score off my <laughs> oh, aunt. My we used to she score. Had, she used to have um, like the date rape drug. 
<laughs> Rohypnol. Rohypnol. Yeah. You took this flight. You took this once the wheels were up. You had sh- an empty bladder. You would ask for a window seat. You would tuck your head in there <laughs> somehow. You take this pill. <laughs> And you didn't move for 10 hours. You were roofing yourself? Completely. At eight years old? No. Like 12. For sure 12 we were doing it. I don't know how I feel about this We had to sleep. You could not. It's 13 hours. It's so claustrophobic. You've never flown to Israel not in business. (laughs) Actually, I have. Actually, I have. Okay. You were in the seat right behind. But you was completely. You were. It was by. It would relax. It wasn't bad. I don't think Leo's ever flown anywhere not in business. No, he used to fly coach. Wait Um, a second. I just want to, for the record, say that I'm pretty sure that if I'm not allowed to say wife beater, I'm pretty sure that we're also not allowed to say the date rape drug. Roofies. Yeah. Yes. What? No. The. It's funny because there's this show that we're, that's a very Jewish show we're watching right now on Hulu. Can called, we talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about it. It's called Fleischman is in Trouble with, um, what's the guy from the social network? Jesse. Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. And Sounds Claire Jewish. Danes. And they make, there's a, narr- there's a third party narrator voice for the show, which I actually like. Yeah. Uh, it's like kind of vintage. It's the friend. Feels. Yeah. yeah. She, but she's like narrating the okay. show. And she... And so she'll like freeze frame things and kind of like break the fourth wall and be like, people used to make date rape dr- uh, roofie jokes in the 90s. Like sh- like a disclaimer because right. someone mentioned roofies. And right. She, like, paused the show and was like, this was okay in the 90s. That's good. It was yeah. very okay on a flight to Israel. I remember several times I, 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 I woke up and I'm like, my I hadn't moved my body. Mm-hmm. And, and by the time you wake up 10, 12 hours into the flight, <laughs> people are all standing. Yeah. Like everybody's in the yes. aisle. Everybody's in the aisle. But before, please take your seats and your seat belt. There's none of that. Just like everybody, just do your thing. Just don't kill each other back there. Yes. And I remember one time I woke up and some guy makes eye contact with me and goes to me, Ech. Like, how? <laughs> yeah, how? how? How did you sleep for? for I go, uh, uh, I think I said something like melatonin. <laughs> At 12. But it was like. My parents, would... I'm pretty sure, gave me Dimetap. Dimetap? Yeah, Dimetap. I'm pretty sure that's for like a sore throat. They don't sell it anymore. They don't? No. I no. grew up like chugging I, that. I, know. I remember I liked the flavor it was grape. of it actually. Yeah, grape. Uh, my parents would give me Dimetap for flights. But some of my earliest memories are flying from Miami to Madrid. That mm. flight. And I was like very young because my parents would send me as an unaccompanied minor <gasps> with my sister. So we were both on the, me and Christina would be on the flight with those big lanyards yeah. that, you that say Oh, minor. that's so and cute. So some of my earliest, earliest memories of flying are being on those giant planes from Miami to Madrid. And the you would be assigned like a, a flight attendant mm-hmm. who was like babysitting you. And they would just let us, they would like take us everywhere. How old were you? Around. Oh, I'll give you a little wing. Like six little or wings. seven. Were you scared? I loved it. No. He's so they loved. didn't let you leave the house, but you could fly across the ocean by yourself. Well, I wasn't by myself. I was with a, a chaperone of sorts. And then someone would be at the airport to pick us up. Yeah, but back then you can get to the gate. You didn't have to wait till they walk all the way through. Um, we Rohypnol, that is, you know, that really is what they, they re, in college, I remember, the, they really did call that the date rape drug. Would you send Ari as an unaccompanied minor somewhere? Okay. Oh, I, I thought you were going to say, would I give Ari Rohypnol? Well. No, never. Are you crazy? You wouldn't put him on a plane? I wouldn't even, no, absolutely really? not. Yeah, it is kind of looking You wouldn't send him to Israel with like. Did that. No. Do you know, like, how much of a Jewish mother I am with that child? Oh, really? Oh, my God. Wait, speaking of Jewish, we watched this show of called This whole Fleischmann. podcast is speaking of Jewish. <laughs> I know, <now>. really? <laughs> um, this, we watched a show called uh, Fleischmann, is, Fleischmann in trouble. is in Trouble on Hulu. And, like, you know, like, when... It takes when, place in New York and Manhattan. In, like... In the 90s? But when I guess Hollywood yeah. wants to produce movies or something, maybe it's not from Hollywood, I don't know what it is. They, was a, they, they, they either completely avoid anything Jewish or when they go Jewish, it is so Jewish. Yeah. There is nothing in this show that is not Jewish. All the names are Jewish. Yeah. All the situations, it's all, it's like you're basically on the Upper East Side. He's yeah. a doctor. Well, that's where it takes place. Yeah. What like, year does it take place? Throughout like the... 90s through because they're he's in med school and then he becomes a doctor in like the early 2000s so they have flashback right? to when he's in medical yeah. school which is the 90s but it's taking place very smartly 
2016, right before the election, mm. so they can avoid the whole mask thing and the whole, which was genius, no? Yeah, because we watched Glass Onion and the masks were very prominent and that. part of the plot line. I hate uh, that. Which is going to be weird. I wonder how that's going to age like years from now when people watch that movie. I mean, they're going to remember like the pandemic. Well, they but... won't remember. It'll be like kids. Oh, right. Like 9-11. Like, yeah, what is it? Surgery. Yeah, why are they doing? Were you alive for 9-11? I was alive for 9-11. How... You were young though. You don't. Very young. Yeah. That's crazy. Like. Yeah. No, but this show is insane how it's so specific. You usually don't like these kinds of shows. I, but I, are... It's easy to watch. It just moves along. Um, It's... um. Borderline depressing. Yeah, it's a little sad. It's a little sad. This poor guy the went to medical school. Good. It's funny that because like you know back that the day you thought that oh someone goes to medical school they're gonna do well. And his life the doesn't turn out. Poorest of all well. of his friends. They're mm. all this Upper East Side, um, snooty people. It's but it's so specific to the the Jewish world of the Upper East Side. Yeah, it's very okay. hyper specific. Like all the references. It's like yeah. we were watching it. We're like, what do people who like don't live in New York, like are they enjoying the show? It feels a little like. I think that they enjoy window into like, oh, this is what the Jewish people do in New York. <laughs> oh, wow. They run around the Upper East Side and send their kids to summer camp. Right. Wow. They do that. What's this Hamptons <laughs> thing? Okay, great. Wow. He doesn't have a car. His, the apartment is so sad looking. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to look into it's this. It's interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been on a shameless binge. Have you guys seen The UK this? version? Or? No, American. Isn't there two different versions, aren't there? I don't know, but the American one is... What's shameless? It's with yeah. Emmy Rossum and William H. Macy. It's really, really good. Okay. Goyam for you. I love it. Yeah, you'll we love it. We tried watching Mammals last What's night. What's that? Oh. James Corden, but... James Corden, the, who was infam infamously kicked out of Balthazar. Correct. I, recall. I do. And so now I can't watch it, because, which is a shame <laughs> because I actually feel like his acting is not bad, but I was surprised right. by But the whole time I'm watching, I'm like, ew, you're like a mean person. And I, I didn't even finish the first episode. If That's... you're mean to, to waitstaff, yeah. you're a mean person. But can't we separate the artist the... from the art? Or the rapist from the comedy in the case of Bill Cosby, who is going back on tour. Is Wait, really? no, he's oh, yes. not. I'm he... opening for him. <laughs> Wait, really going back on tour? Yeah. Where it, did you hear this? I, it's on on the interwebs. Who is going to a Bill Cosby show in good conscience? Uh, Who said they're well, going? In it, they're going it, unconscious it, it, it. is a joke. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. A lot of roofie references in this episode. Oh, I'm, sorry. Wow. I'm sorry. Wait, I would totally go see Bill Cosby. I today. would not. Uh, actually, you know what? I would wait till it hits Netflix. Okay. Netflix. First of all, he no, looks for Hoggett. He looks What funky. is he that? Looks deflated. I mean, have you seen his face? He looks. He's 109. Yeah. Right? How, what is he going to do on stage? I have no idea. Yeah, it's gonna be a mess. I okay, see, I want to see a hot mess on stage. No, 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 no. I don't want to line his pockets. With, okay, he no, should be in prison. No, I, first of all, fine, he should be in prison. But we watch films and television shows about Adolf Hitler. That's completely different. Adolf Hitler isn't getting money directly from those shows. This okay, but I'm sure there's tour. a better good, example. Good, I like that. I that I was I was like, <laughs> I, was, I want to see where she go. I'm Coco Chanel, not Coco Chanel. Again, Hugo any Boss. documentary you watch of Coco Chanel, the she's not getting I'm talking about profiting buying profit. buying those products. Again, she's not profiting. She from was when dead. she was alive and but she was a Nazi. Now. She's dead but, now. Okay. But she's not there anymore. So a, a better example, I mean Jews uh, run it, no? Jews run Coco a better, Chanel now, no? But, but no, I, yeah, Jews they, but when Coco Chanel, Chanel yeah. was alive, I wouldn't have bought Chanel. You're, I'm, I'm usually, but now I'm you'll you. I'm usually with you. I'm, mm, I think you can pull something better. Okay, so, I'm talking about touring specifically. Who is like you are going there to see this person, and this person is still Kanye. Alive, I wouldn't money. go see yeah. Kanye. Would you go see Kanye? That I wouldn't go see Kanye. Do you know Kanye used to be one of my most played artists on Spotify before this whole thing? I love music too. And so this whole concept of. Because I used to hear the argument of separating the artist from the art when the whole Michael Jackson thing happened and then the R. Kelly thing happened. And I didn't feel like a particular affinity for either of those two artists. So it wasn't a struggle for me. Like, whatever, there's Michael Jackson has some great songs, but I'm not going to, like, struggle to not put his his music on. But Kanye was, like, in my regular rotation at the gym. Like, I would listen to those songs over and over. And, like, I just haven't since this whole incident okay first of all i think kanye was the only musician i listened to for probably a year constantly which album 
I don't know, all of them. Like yeah. uh, uh, my nine year old got me into Kanye. Like I never listened to him. And then my son listens to him and I became totally obsessed and watched his documentary. And I tried his documentary. It wasn't that great. Did I try it? Yeah, you tried it with. No, he's so interesting. I mean, he's. Listen, say no, what. No, listen to me. It is Kanye, it, uh, God has put a gift on earth and it embodied in something called Kanye. Pavarotti was a gift. There was a gift and it was embodied in this thing called Pavarotti. It was a gift from God. And it just where the vessel of the gift landed it w was not good. Yeah. It, it was not, it changed. So, who's an example so of an artist who is uh, problematic who you would still see? There are just so many like, artists. Who would you not see? Like, you wouldn't go. You, I would, you, would, you wouldn't be like, hey, Modi, I have extra tickets to the Kanye show. Do you want to come? Like, you wouldn't go to that. No. Okay, but you're saying you would go see Bill Cosby? I'm I'm saying I would open for Bill Cosby. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Figuratively and <laughs> literally. Um, I, I would see it because it's... Uh, I, I would... If it's being taped, I'd rather watch it at home. Uh, but a problematic... So you would go in person? A problematic... That I would go see. Uh, I don't really know who. I think Cosby might might be fair to be. He's probably a little more I mean, than problematic. Went to go see Dua Lipa. She's not as problematic as Bill She's Cosby. She's one Modi. of the most biggest anti-Semites in the world. Yeah, according to like a watchdog group, because she posted about Palestine like three times on Twitter. That is a Bill Cosby does not make. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So all right. So what about Weinstein? Are we watching Har any Harvey Weinstein movies? That's a good example. That's an interesting argument, and I. That's hard to decipher because in those cases, Weinstein is only a small piece of a larger puzzle that involves actors and actresses and other people who contributed to that work of art. What about Woody Allen? Woody Allen I struggle with. I uh, I don't like watching his stuff now. I, I do watch it a but, little bit differently. Yeah. I watch it a little bit different. It's, again, okay, it's but you a would genius, watch Bill it's a genius, a gift that was given by God and put on earth, embodied in Woody Allen, and he made mistakes that were... Not cute. You have I to think be able that's to. I that's think generous. movies are a hard uh, medium to gauge. You know, separating the artist from the art because, like I said, so many people, so many people's work goes into a movie. That yeah, so a movie was directed by Woody Allen, but like so many other moving parts involved that it's hard to just okay uh, fair like fair that. but you're gonna watch bill cosby differently bill cosby than... is a single man on a stage like telling jokes that okay but you're gonna lot. are you gonna read okay what about picasso are you gonna go picasso? you're gonna go see you're gonna go see to a to a picasso I'm not museum buy any of his work. <laughs> i am not gonna buy any of picasso i've been offered i, I no i'm not transferring the money Listen, I don't know. I obviously Bill Cosby is um it's a absolute disaster. People are only going to go out of a sense of morbid curiosity. Yeah, yeah. but that's what I'm saying though. I feel like our mess. entire culture is it's built on the crazy yes. if he dis if he puts together his set in an hour or whatever and he kills it, people are going to die. Die. Let me see. It's I just feel like you know, for someone who's done like particularly heinous things, like Bill Cosby, like for them to go on tour is. Bill Cosby plans comedy tour in 2023 after new prison. One second. Bill Cosby is eyeing a return to touring in 2023. The controversial comedian said as much during a surprise radio interview. Oh. All right. When I come yeah, out of this, no. I uh, this is sounds a little. It sounds like he's taking some of his own supply over there. Yes. Responding to Spears' question about whether 2023 might be a touring year, Cosby responded, "Quote: Yes, yes, because there's so much fun to be had in this storytelling that I do." All right. Well, speaking <laughs> of touring year. Yes, we are touring. We are. We have some shows coming up. Um, we're about to head to Florida. By the time this airs, like we'll be in Florida actively, probably. Um, all of those shows in Florida: Boca Black Box, Aventura Cultural Center, um, and then some other private shows are all booked and and sold out. And West Palm is booked too. Yeah, West okay, Palm, so uh, Palm Beach Improv on February second is sold out. Um, then we go to London. Yes. Uh, in February, at the end of February through March second. Also sold out. Those five shows are sold out. Amazing. Um, and the next chunk is uh, the Tempe Improv in Arizona. Right. On March twelfth. 
Yep. And then March 22nd, you're in but Montreal. there's seats there still. Yeah, uh, seats. still seats available for Arizona. Okay. Then we're in uh, Montreal on March 22nd for two shows, a 7 p.m. and a 9 p.m. show. There are still tickets available for the 9 p.m. Okay. And then all of the Toronto shows on the 25th are sold out. Wow. Yeah. And then we're going to be announcing a West Coast run <gasps> uh, yes. in the near future. Hopefully by the time this is out, there might be final. And also 23 is going to have Israel in it. It's yes, gonna Israel have, in September, October. I'm feeling Australia. They're, we're getting close. They pulled it, they're pulling it together over there. And um, maybe Berlin. And... Uh, and it's going to just be an amazing year, and I'm looking forward to sharing it all. And I, I hope the people who listen to this podcast, just I guess we're not here to, to unveil any big secrets. <laughs> we're just like people, take, just, it's a nice thing to numb your brain when you're doing something like with the kids or walking the dog or whatever. People like the podcast. You don't have to end no, every no, podcast I just, with that. I just love, like, I'm so I mean, happy they this do. this is your thing, thanks. I'm so happy that people do, and I, I, I thank you all for your support so, and you two guys for for running it it's amazing and maybe um, not and with I the kids also thank a and h provisions <laughs> no <Yeah. laughs> uh thank you very much seth and uh we looking forward to working with you in the new year yes and um and visiting the factory i'm not visiting the i'm visiting Go ahead. i'm going and you know what i want full fashion a and h gear we had a Don't call with it. i'm gonna oh, i'm gonna we be do that thing you did with um with if you good the, if you send a good review Seth will send you a package. Well, we'll have to clear that with yeah. Seth first. Anyway, <laughs> so that's it. What, what? Anything we need to tell people about you? You can just follow me on Instagram and all my news is there, Periel Ashenbrand. And if you're wondering uh, how you can keep up with shows, just go to Modi's website, www.modilive.com. Fill out the contact form with your name and information, and there's a little message field. And if you just write like the name of where you live, like a state or a country or a city... I'm trying to build out segmented mailing lists so that, you know, I don't bother you with emails that don't pertain to you. That's right. Um, Very thoughtful of you. So if, but if you just put your email, then you're just getting on a, a generic email list. And that's so. it. And so, um, okay, that's it. That was, that was fun. Thank you guys. Great. And um, uh, have a shine. Shine. Exactly. Done. Mashiach energy Shoyach. and not Mukta energy. <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. bye. <laughs>